good day brethren and those that may be watching this will be a, a very quick study and a discussion on the scorner people are very scornful this study is intended I'd say for for the babes in Christ those that are uh, new to the faith that may have just come out of the world and this is just a brief quick study of a few scriptures talking about the scorner and what is a let's read the definition from Webster's 1828 it says the scorner one that scorns a contender or contemner can't pronounce that word a despiser they are great scorners of death a scorfer person a derater in scripture one who scoffs or scoffer I should say a derater in scripture one who scoffs at religions its ordinances and its teachers and who makes a mock of sin and the judgment and threatenings of God against sinners which is everyone I'm a sinner too well, the only difference is I'm saved thanks to the death burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ let's look at uh, one more definition scornful contemptuous disdainful entertaining scorn insolent acting in defiance or disregard scornful of winter's frost and summer's heat complaining in scripture holding religion in contempt treating with disdain religion and the dispensations of God scornful now let's turn to Psalms 1 in the Word of God anyways not a great bunch are they the scorners the scornful Psalm 1 it says here blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sit, sitteth in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in a season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. A lot of these scorners are ungodly. They'll perish. Now turn to Proverbs 9. A few more verses here. Read from verse 6 through 12 says here forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding he that reproveth the scorner giveth to himself shame and he that rebuketh a wicked man giveth to himself a blot reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee rebuke a wise man and he will love thee in a sense we're to give out the gospel that's our uh, great commission you know we're ambassadors for Christ and we're to preach the gospel to every creature but when you know you're dealing with a scorner and they've already heard the gospel like it says in Proverbs here reprove not a scorner lest he hate thee you're just you're basically um, casting bread in front of dogs you know and they'll just go on scorning until they're broken or uh, taken taken out so just be wise with that this is for the babes in Christ like I've been kind of naive too and it's not to get down where the preach the gospel to everyone but uh, there's certain groups like if you hover around hang around them it's uh, it could be unfruitful to say the least and I'm talking about scorners or a lot of these atheist types they've heard the gospel multiple times and they get real a real joy a real kick out of uh, trying to debate and stuff with sin, uh, debate about God and sin and all this stuff with Christians and you're basically wasting your time. You're seat, you're taking a seat with the scornful in that case if uh, you don't stop. So uh, just be wise about that. No, don't don't uh, waste your time too much with these scorner types. Verse nine: Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. That's a very nice verse too. That means right here and now. But you carry that over, eternal life. 
your years will and days will be multiplied and increased especially for us uh well for everyone that's uh, born again if thou be wise thou shalt be wise for thyself but if thou scornest thou alone shalt bear it now we'll talk about a little bit of prophecy too we're just going uh through a few different chapters here uh isaiah 29 Verse 18 says, And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel, Jesus Christ. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. That make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Even back in the Old Testament, it's talking about prophecy, of course, this one in the future. But uh, these people, they lie in wait, and they're just trying to get uh, the saints of God to stumble. And don't take it too personally, brethren, when uh, you're dealing with these people. Uh, just pray about it. And uh, like I said, it's just you got to just go with the flow, I guess. Don't let these scornful men uh, get you down, that's what I'm saying. They'll come to naught. Anyways, verse 22. Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, concerning the house of Jacob. Jacob shall not be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. That they will. Now let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1. We covered Psalm 1. Let's cover some of Proverbs 1. Just a few verses. We'll read from verse... Uh, 20 let's say 20 to the end of the chapter Proverbs 1 verse 20 take heed this is the real wisdom ye scorners wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the streets she crieth in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates in the city she uttereth her words saying how long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded it. But you have said it not, all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Pause for a second. The Lord himself, when the... Uh, I guess you could say whoever laughs the last. I don't know how that goes, but laughs the loudest. The Lord will get the last laugh. And these wicked, vile people that have nothing but mocked and disdained God and knows of God. If they don't repent and get right and believe the gospel, uh, God himself, the creator, the almighty God, heaven and earth, creator of heaven and earth, will laugh at their demise. How awful that would be won't be so funny then would it just give it time wait for that hourglass to finally run out and the Lord will get you he'll get you anyways verse 27 when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind when distress and anguish cometh upon you then shall they call upon me but I will not answer they shall seek me early but they shall not find me for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord they would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Now uh, we'll finish up in Romans chapter 8, brethren few verses the 
the saddest thing is today this present time and this dispensation the Lord wants all men to repent and to be saved and yet some people they harden their hearts so much in their conscience and they're just seared and they refuse they absolutely refuse to acknowledge God anything even though uh, by him all things consist their food they're not thankful for just their very breath multiple things it's just it's astonishing I'm just glad that uh, the Lord saved me I had enough sense came to the Lord believed the gospel by his grace I'm saved so I deserved every bit what they're going to get. Anyways, Romans 8. I'll finish a few verses. Chapter 8, verse 17. Let's read from there. We'll stop at uh, verse 24. It says here, And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God we're waiting brethren right now for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but, what, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And I want one more verse. Likewise, the Spirit also, also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. We'll stop there. Fine, brethren, like I was out with another Christian. A couple weeks ago, the local square, you could say, a bit of witnessing, a bit of silent witnessing, but uh, we had some a booth or a table, you could say, and we're waiting for people that were interested. Thinking next time we'll need a bullhorn. But anyways, uh, the few people that came by, very scornful, not serious. One young man, he seemed kind of halfway interested, but I don't know if he was... Uh, being genuine or not, it's hard to say, but regardless, gave him a few words of scripture and talked about the Lord. It's just the creation itself and the people are fallen. And a lot of them do hate the Lord, unfortunately. But we're just waiting, brethren, with patience. That one day... I guess I could use the word nightmare, maybe. I don't know if that's appropriate, but uh, this present darkness time will come to an end. Can't wait for the Lord to come back. And I'll be with Him. I hope you are too. Anyways, brethren, the scorner, forget him. You've done your best. You gave Him a good witness. You gave Him the gospel. And they, you're just uh, at that point uh, if they're very mocking and stuff just forget it anyways brethren please continue to pray for me Lord willing I may have a couple more studies coming out I want to work on one study for a, a co-worker asked for a special request and I need to spend some time doing that look forward to it but uh, just continue to pray for me. Pray for the saints. Don't forget to be charitable when you can, when it's in your uh, abilities and means to do so. Be charitable. 
Again, thank you for watching. That's it. Bye-bye.